This is Mr. Beck Does Your Homework. This is AP Physics Homework 2.4, 2.4, and it's on free fall. This is question number three and four, parts one and two. It says, a tennis ball is thrown vertically upward with an initial velocity of positive 8.7 meters per second. That's good because positive we consider up. So I'm going to say that my initial velocity equals 8.7 meters per second. What will the ball's velocity be when it returns to its starting point? The acceleration of gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. So I'm looking for my final velocity, and I know that my acceleration of gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared, but I'm going to write that as negative because I know it's down, 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay, now I've got a problem because I have an initial velocity, a final velocity, gravity. I only have three variables. I need a fourth here somewhere. So one thing I know is that when the ball goes up and comes back down, that uh, its direction up, its direction down, when it gets back to the bottom, it's got a displacement in the y direction of zero. So it goes up and comes back down to its initial point. So that's what it says. You know, when it returns to its starting point, well, it's got zero displacement. So initial velocity, final velocity, gravity, and um, uh, sorry, gravitational acceleration and displacement. So what I don't have here is time. So the equation I have without time is that v squared equals v0 squared plus twice my acceleration times my displacement. Now I can see right here that 2gy, if y is 0, this is going to go away. So this tells me that my final velocity squared is going to be the same as my initial velocity squared. So my final, so my initial velocity is 8.7, so my final velocity squared equals my initial velocity squared. Well, I'm just going to square root both sides of that before I even plug in a number. And that's going to tell me that my final velocity equals my initial velocity. But there's a problem here. When I square root, I can get a positive or a negative. So I know that my final velocity is going to be 8.7, but now i got to think. If this is 8.7 meters per second, well, it started off going up, right? but it ends up going down. So I know my final velocity must be the negative of my initial velocity. So I know that my final velocity is going to be negative 8.7 meters per second. And that is very important to think about that when you've got a square root, because square roots can have negative or positive values. This also is one of our tricks that we know that when it goes up and it comes back down, that its initial velocity here is going to be opposite its final velocity here. So I know that my final velocity is going to be negative, my initial velocity, and that is a little trick that I'm going to use in order to solve problems like this in the future. The second question, question four, says how long will it take the ball to reach its starting point? Okay, now I want time. So I've got an initial velocity, a final velocity, an acceleration, and I'm looking for my time. Well, my time, that's easy to get to because I have an equation that tells me that... Um, my displacement is going to be my average velocity times time. No, I'm going to, not going to use that one because that's going to give me a zero. I have my final velocity is my initial velocity plus my acceleration times time. So my final velocity is going to be negative 8.7 equals my initial velocity of positive 8.7 plus my acceleration times time. So when I got negative 8.7 here and positive 8.7 there and I subtract, I'm going to get 17.4. Uh, negative 17.4 equals negative 9.81 times time. And when I divide this out, I will get the time it takes to go up and down accelerating at 9.81. So that will give me time equals something, and that's my answer to number four.